I have lived for ten years as a social worker, traveling this land that continues to heal many wounds. Each story I hear, each face that I see, always reminds me that there is more needed to be shared. I cry when I am alone. Their life experience becomes my own. I have seen and heard so much pain and desperation, but not like this story I am about to tell. The Second World War saw the Japanese occupation of the Philippines in January 1942. Massacres, rapes, torture, and pillage characterized the invasion of the Japanese Imperial Army. There were about 600,000 Japanese soldiers in the country then. In any war and armed conflict situation, violence against women is done in a massive scale, a strategy to defeat the enemy by demoralizing and terrorizing the population. And our women have been subjected to such inhumane crime. Most of the women were very young. One I know of was even just a child. The traumatic experience they went through during the war and the experience of rape created wounds that refuse to heal to this day. To address the needs of former comfort women who were clamoring for justice, the Philippine government created the Interagency Task Force on Former Comfort Women. Agencies involved were the Department of Foreign Affairs, the Department of Justice, the National Commission on the Role of Filipino Women, the Department of Health, and the Department of Social Welfare and Development. A package of welfare assistance for the former comfort women was proposed to the Asian Women's Fund of Tokyo, Japan for funding. The project was approved on January 15, 1997 and was known as the Assistance to Lawless in Crisis Situation Project, or ALCS. The Lawless are between the ages of 64 and 85 years old, coming from Ilocos, Central Luzon, Southern Luzon, Bicol, Western Visayas, Central Visayas, Eastern Visayas, Northern Mindanao, Southeastern Mindanao, and the National Capital Region. Four of the Lolas have already migrated to the United States, Canada, and Australia, but have also availed of the assistance. The Department of Social Welfare and Development is the implementing agency of the ALCS project. A total of 185 Lolas were served from January 1997 to June 2002. Out of this number, 12 are now deceased. The project hopes to rebuild the self-esteem of these former comfort women through psychosocial interventions and financial assistance to at least meet their basic needs. Services rendered include provision of food allowance, medical assistance, shelter assistance, livelihood assistance, provision of home and recreational appliances, clothing assistance, transportation assistance, payment of utility bills, provision of assistive devices like wheelchairs, hearing aids, and others, and payment of incidental expenses like burial expenses in case of death of the Lola. The Asian Women's Fund released a total of about 83.7 million pesos to the DSWD from February 1997 to June 2002 for the implementation of the ALCS project. Of this amount, 76.2 million pesos is for the medical and welfare assistance of the Lolas and about 7.5 million pesos for the project's administrative expenses. At the end of the five-year project, we visited our Lolas again to see for ourselves how the assistance has improved their lives. We went to Bulacan, Pampanga, Bataan, Rizal, Batangas, Quezon, Sorsogon, and around Metro Manila. We were glad to see the Lolas again. Most of them were happy and excited to see us too. We saw that the Lolas who have come out and have spoken of the secrets they have kept for more than 50 years were able to free themselves in a way. Dati, mag, uh, mangutang ako, wala magpautang sa akin. Uh, kasi wala akong alam 
wala silang alam na ibabayad. Kaya naisanla ko ang lote ko. Awa naman ang Diyos dumating itong padalan, biyaya ng hapon na bigay sa akin. Pero maraming nagtat, nagtawa sa akin noon. Nung umaplay ako na yun. Sabi nila, bakit daw naisipan kung gawin yung ganun, hindi rin ba ako nahihiya? Sabi ko, kinain ko na kung hiya ko. Gawa ng kahirapan ko. Natuwa ako dahil makukuha ko na matutubos ko na ang lote ko, pagkasanla. Nakabili ako ng isang dipadyak, oh, dalawang dipadyak. Tig-isa yung dalawang anak kong lalaki. Nakapagpagawa kami ng bahay. At yung kwan, nakabili kami ng ilang gamit. Appliances. Malaking tulong nagawa sa akin at sa kahit sa mga anak ko. Meron akong naitabi, pero ting magigipit ako, nadudukot din. Nagpapasalamat ako ng marami at nakatulong ng malaki sa akin. Ang, na, ang pinansyal na binigay sa, binigay sa akin ng DSWD na galing sa Japan. Ibig ko sana sa mga uh, kinauukulan na hapon na kung maaari, pinakikiusap ko, gawin ang habang buhay ang kanilang biyaya na pinagkalab sa mga comfort woman. Kung maaari, bigyan kami ng panggamot kung kami nagkakasakit. Noong pong hindi pa dumadating ang tulong na ibinibigay ng Japanese government, eh, talaga pong kami ay mahirap. Naghikahos po kami sa buhay. Ay, ngayon po naman, nung dumating na yung kanilang tulong, talaga po naman kami ay nakaluag na sa buhay. Ngayon po naman ay talagang ako ay nakatulog na ng maayos. Kahit na umulaan, humangin, hindi na ako nag-aalala ng aming bahay, eh, magigiba pa. Salamat po sa kanila. Yung nakatanggap ako nung galing doon sa ano, DSW, ang laki ng pasalamat ko. Tsaka nang tutulong din ako sa simbahan, nagbibigay rin kami. Pasalamat ko naman. Kasi kahit pa paano, nakatanggap ako ng biyaya. Diagnosed of advanced tuberculosis in 1997, Lola Felicitas availed of medical assistance. She underwent treatment at a PGH for six months and was successfully cured. Kung wala yan, wala na ako. Matagal ng patay. Tapos sa ano tulong ng ano, mga bigay sa akin ng, ng hapon, napaaral ko pa yung anak ko. Nakatapos siya. Ngayon, may trabaho na. Medical assistance, isa yun sa mga uh, naging malaking tulong para sa akin dahil ako nga ay matanda na isang masakiting. Sa kagustuhan ko naman na, na mabigyang konsuelo ko yung mga apo ko, yung ibang video kinukulang sa matrikula, <laughs> nabibigyan ko na din. Tsaka yung mga baon-baon nila, eh, malaking, malaking tulong na rin sa aking mga apo. Kaya... Thank you kayong tulong nila sa akin. Ang naging mabuti nga, ito nga, nakapagpatayo ako ng konting tira. Pero wala pa itong titulo. Hindi ko na ito. Hinapos na akong pera. Papasalamat ako sa mga. Naging tulong. Nakaginahawa ako na ako ito sa buhay. Nakabayad ako ng ibang utak. Maraming maraming salamat. Sana matulong naman niyo ako sa medical. Talagang kawagulong na kulang ako. Lola Trining never completely recovered from the stab wound in her chest inflicted by the Japanese. She's very thin to this day and opted to remain single. But with the ALCS project, her family was able to venture into buy and sell business of dry goods, clothes, and school uniforms. Earnings are good. Wala, wala naman ang aking galit sa hapon. Nung matatanggap naman ako ng kaunting alaala nila at kuwanda pawis sa aking Hirap na tinamo ng pagkasaksak sa akin. Kung may nagpapasalamat. Noon, binibigyan nila ako ng sustento sa pagkain yun, sa gamot. Tapos nung ano, natigil na nga yun, matagal na. Nung unang binigay sa akin ng Japan, ang nakuha ko, nagpagawa ako ng bahay. Yung mga anak ko, Binigyan ko din dito yung anak ko. Siyempre, nakakaawa naman mga anak ko. Mahirap lang. Nung na-aksidente ko, na-opera ko. Ngayon, yung natira ko pang pera, 
Pag uwi ko dito sa bahay, yun na lang ang ginagastos ko. Hindi na ako nag-iilaw sa gabi. Hindi na ako nag-TTV dahil wala na akong pera. Nag-TTPid ako. Ngayon nga, ang ginagawa ko gabi-gabi, nagdadasal ako, umiiyak ako kasi nga, eh paano na kung wala na akong pera? Wala na akong mahihinga ng tulong. Mahirap lang ang mga anak ko. Paano na ako? Ngayon nakita niyo naman kung ano itsura ng kalagayan ko ngayon. Mahira. Hindi ako makakilos, hindi ako makapaligong mag-isa. Yung apo ko nag-aalaga sa akin, hindi ako makakain na mag-isa. Kailangan yung susubuan nila ako, ganun. Eh, paano hindi ko maitaas ito? Hindi ko maigalaw, ganun. Yung, ano, yun ang kalagayan ko ngayon. Kaya kung naaawa pa sila sa akin, buhay pa ako. Kung maiha, kung maitutuloy nila hanggang buhay ako, tulungan nila ako. Ngayon, kung hindi naman, salamat naman. Bahala na lang ang Diyos sa akin. Originally from Rojas Capiz, Lola Juanita opted to live in Marikina to forget her painful past. Pira, napampanggastos ko sa aking kuha, sa aking buhay, sa aking sarili. Mga gamit, bahay ang binigay nila sa akin. Yan, ang pagpasalamat ko. Hindi ko na masasabi. Hindi ko na maubos ang pagpasalamat ko sa buhay ko. Dahil ano, nagbahay ako, nagtitipig ako sa akong yung pagkain lang. Oo. Nga hindi maubos. Kaya nung binibigyan pa ko ng destability, normal ang aking katawan. At saka ang pagkain ko, ma ano ko, mabili kong pagkain, mabili kong mga gamot niya kailangan ko. Pero ngayon, hindi na sila nagbigay. Kaya mahirap na hirap na ako ngayon. Kulang ako sa kalsiyum. <coughs> Sumakit ng likod ko. Wala ko pang bili ng gamot. Lola Belen has been blind since 1975. And yet, she still washes her own clothes. Her only wish is that she may be given free funeral services when she dies. Nakapagpagwaho ako ng bahay, ngayon pinauupahan ko. Tapos may negosyo ko, nagbibigay ako ng bigas na hulugan sa tubig. Tapos siya, sari-sari, ako din yung bumuho na dyan para may libreng pagkain araw-araw. Ang akin lang pinakikiusap kung pwede yung food allowance, 3,000 man lang. Ibalik na lang sa akin. Malaking bagay yun yung para sa akin. Maraming salamat to. Maraming maraming salamat kung ako'y pagbibigyan nyo pa. 78 na ho ako. Sandali na lang ho ang buhay ko. Nagkaroon ako ng konting pabahe nila. Tsaka yung kwan. Kaya lang, hindi lubos na kaustuhan sa kailangan. Sa buhay, kulang na kulang. Maraming pagkukulang. Eh sana naman, Magkaroon sila ng, ano ba ang tawag doon, makabagbagdamdamin man lang sa aking pagkatao dahil ako matanda na. At sa mga, mga kasamahan kong mga comfort woman na matanda ay eh, marami nang namatay. Eh, siguro naman eh, maaari silang maglubag ang loob sa amin. Na kami tulungan na hangga sa katandaan namin at siguro ko eh, nasisiguro kong hindi naman masyadong magtatagal na ang buhay namin. Lola Lolita and her family members availed of livelihood assistance. They're into palay farming, which provides them now of their everyday needs. Ako naman nagkira ng aram para sa kamatayan. Ikinuha na ako niya ng living. Malakong pasasalamat ko sa lahat. Through the project, Lola Juanita was able to purchase her hearing aid. The DSWD workers also arranged a cataract operation for her. She also availed of livelihood assistance, which she gave to her grandchildren. They're into livestock production and corn production. The commitment and dedication of the DSWD project management staff and project implementers, the expertise and active participation of the Interagency Task Force Committee on Former Comfort Women, greatly helped in the successful implementation of the project. 
I just want to emphasize that uh, our Lolas are very strong. They are strong women. Uh, after all the experiences that they have gone through and struggling to meet both ends meet, our Lolas really have uh, made life of their own, although some family members may not have known initially about their own experiences. More and more they have been open. Their family members also accept them as they are. We see that the effect of the war um, on people, not only on them, and, and I think that should motivate all of us to work for peace. Most of them are already uh, about uh, well, less than 80 years old, and it would be very difficult for them to uh, tell in detail their stories. We believe that uh, what they're saying is true, but somehow they cannot tell the stories in a logical way, but you believe that they're telling the truth because of their expression, because of the circumstances um, that they're narrating. They tell us, they request us not to publicize their stories. Meron dyan na may mga pamilya, pero may rejection. Meron na mga mga iba, may pamilya, pero hindi naman makakope doon sa kanilang mga pangangailangan. Yung iba naman, talagang walang pamilya and you have to provide substitute family and home care. We really made a difference in the lives of these uh, lolas. Ang sinasabi ko nga, na talagang hindi mapapantayan yung healing yung iba yung spiritual dimension yung kalimutan nila na naging biktima sila at saka aksepthahin sila ng kanilang pamilya ng kanilang komunidad at saka maalis yung yung shame the department of health um, was stopped because they found out that the uh, medical condition of the lolas need to be uh, responded to. No? Uh, most of them are because of poverty. Most of them are mal malnourished mm. and they also have um, physical uh, condition that need to be rehabilitated. So um, to respond to this, the Department of Health issued uh, like a memorandum uh, wherein a special card is issued to the, to the Lolas no? uh, and they were given special privilege not to form in line anymore no? for uh, whether it's outpatient or inpatient. Most of them are given free services and free um, examinations if it's available in, within the hospital of the DOH. We would like to recommend that a geriatric unit be, um, be established in, in the DOH retained hospitals. They still need continuous and sustained medical management no? because um, let's be realistic they would be here you know uh, in about in about 10 years yes maximum of 10 years I don't think it would require a lot of resources because it will be only in selected uh, hospitals and I suggest that uh, to destigmatize, you know, the presence of the of the lolas, that this geriatric unit be open, you know, to, to all senior citizens. The assistance to lolas in crisis situation was a very good project. It proved that even with past experiences during World War II, both countries and people could go beyond these differences and work together. That is to provide service to the former comfort women. The Asian Women's Fund has provided not only fund, but also provided the former comfort women the opportunity to have a new life. The best thing probably that happened to the Lolas is that they were able to come to terms with an experience that they uh, would rather just forget, which they would not be able to forget. So. An experience that is as um, difficult as that will have to be processed, it, it will have to be surfaced, and um, they have to confront it because otherwise healing cannot proceed. So I thought that that is the best um, thing that the project had done to the women. I would like to thank the Japanese government and the people of Japan 
for providing the assistance and the fund so that the lives of these lolas whom we have assisted had become a little better, had become a little happier, had become a little bit more meaningful in the last years that they're spending here on earth. I also want to say to the lolas, thank you for being brave and courageous in facing your past and wanting to make your present much better for not only yourself but for your family and for us to remember this incident and learn from it. The birth of the ALCS project has in a way given them a better quality of life. Their immediate families benefited too. The Lolas have truly appreciated the assistance. Let it be known though that many decided to come out, not only for the money. Money is easily spent and lost. But to leave a legacy that no such war atrocities ever happen again to the women of today and of the future.